Six teenage girls from Scotts Bluff, aged 13 to 17, are facing what would be felony level charges for an alleged attack on a homeless man. KNEB.TV News starts right now. From your trusted source for news in western Nebraska and eastern Wyoming, this is KNEB.TV News. Presented by Platte Valley Companies, premier provider of financial services. Hello, I'm Ryan Murphy. This is KNEB.TV News, powered by Platte Valley Companies. Thanks for joining me. In our top story, Scottsdale police were called to Pioneer Park the evening of October 3rd for a 51-year-old man with visible injuries to his head and face who said he was attacked by a group of young girls. A short time later, juveniles matching descriptions by the victim were stopped by police in the alley of the 2500 block between 2nd and 3rd Avenues, and all were suspected of being under the influence of alcohol. Four of the six were detained and taken to jail pending transfer to other facilities, with the others released to parents or guardians. Officers collected evidence from the scene that included a knife, hatchet, and a large broken glass container. Court records indicate all six face allegations of intentional second-degree assault and use of a deadly weapon to commit a felony, with additional charges of minor in possession for five of them, four of them with obstruction, and two facing possession of drug paraphernalia. KNB News is withholding the names of the juveniles, as none are charged as adults. Well, a 41-year-old Scottsdale man is facing several felony charges after Scottsdale police investigate accusations he sexually assaulted a teenage female multiple times last year and this year. Charges filed against Boyce McFarland last month include two counts of first-degree forcible sexual assault and three counts of third-degree intentional child abuse without injury. Court records show that when asked about the allegations during a capstone interview, the 17-year-old initially denied anything had happened involving McFarland, but days later told an older sibling she had been assaulted. In a subsequent interview, the teen described how she had been assaulted three times since she was 16, twice in a bedroom and once in a living room. Following his arrest last week, McFarland was scheduled for an initial appearance in Scottsdale County Court on Friday with an initial bond set at $750,000 at 10%. We'll have more news right after this. Tired of feeling stuck? Not sure if you are on the right track? Platte Valley Bank can help keep your finances moving forward with checking account options to fit your lifestyle and an online account chooser to make finding the right account easy. Control your financial future with helpful budgeting tools and automatic savings plans. Now is the time to enjoy the ride with Platte Valley Bank. You belong here. back. A shots fired investigation near Shattern State College results in the 18-year-old suspect to be arrested. Officers responded to the area Wednesday night and located two spent shell casings and were able to track down the driver and recover the firearm. A subsequent search warrant was executed on the suspect's dorm room where ammunition for the firearm was recovered. 18-year-old Justice Lilly was arrested as a Results of the investigation and faces charges including possession of a stolen firearm. He was transported to the Dawes County Jail and will be arraigned later this month in Dawes County Court. Well, the city of Gehring would be the latest in the region to go solar under a proposal to be considered by the city council during their meeting tonight that starts at 6. Under the terms of the three-part agreement with Sand Hills Energy, the city would lease eight acres of land in the industrial park west of Lockwood Road and north of U Street for construction of a one megawatt solar generation facility. In exchange, Sand Hills Energy would sell the power back to the city at a rate of 3.9 cents a kilowatt hour, which is slightly less than the city's current wholesale energy cost, with the rate increasing 5% per year. 
The agreement would last for 25 years with an option to extend for two additional five-year terms, after which Sandhills Energy would be required to decommission and remove the solar energy facility. And following a federal public health advisory panel recommendation to add COVID-19 shots to the vaccines for children and 2023 immunization schedule, Nebraska Chief Medical Officer Dr. Gary Antone says it does not mean the shots are an automatic requirement for school attendance. A statement from Antone says the state of Nebraska establishes vaccine requirements, not the Advisory Committee for Immunization Practices or the CDC. And if the CDC does follow the recommendations, it would put the COVID-19 vaccines at the same level as the flu and HPV vaccines. Antone says he encourages parents to consult with their child's physician regarding the benefits of receiving the vaccine as they make their own decision. Allo means reliability, productivity, connect. Allo means no more of that. Allo means business, local business, big business, small business. If you need reliable phone and internet connectivity, you need Allo. Local service and same day dispatch, free installation, symmetrical upload and download speeds. If your business relies on communication, rely on Allo. Allo means business. Visit allofiber.com forward slash business. This is KNEV.TV weather from the KNEV Storm Center, your trusted source for weather. Clear skies across the area as we go through the evening hours tonight. Temperatures uh, fall down into the 50s. Really not going to be a bad night out there as we do clear out. And another front system comes through late Wednesday. I think that's going to make us cooler again for Thursday. Generally speaking, though, all week, temps are going to be at or below normal. That is certainly a change from where we've been. We do have high wind warnings out here in portions of the area. You'll see the wind prone areas of eastern Wyoming primarily where we're looking at these high wind warnings. Uh, areas like Cheyenne up towards Wheatland uh, and uh, those vicinities, that's the area that we're mostly concerned about along that I-25 and over in the I-80 corridor for some of those stronger winds. Yesterday right at normal we hit 62 after a morning low of 37, record low 12. You notice that it can get pretty chilly out there. Hey, we got 5 hundredths of an inch of moisture in the rain gauge. We're half of what we should be for the month of October, though, and uh, 5 and 2 thirds inches below normal for the year. So yesterday was right at normal at that 62. We haven't had a day below normal before today. It's been a week since we've had below normal temperatures out there. So for the most part, October going to go down as warm as well, and we finally got some moisture for the first time in over two weeks, albeit just five hundredths out there. But we have some more chances coming Wednesday night into Thursday, some scattered uh, coverage of showers possible out there and could see some wet snow mix in. We're going to have some upper end breezy conditions, I think, at times tomorrow, Wednesday, Thursday, and maybe even next week again as well. But uh, hopefully some of the stronger winds are going to move out of our area, but it'll stay breezy and chilly. 39 yesterday or tomorrow on your way to school. Heading home, we'll call it 59. We'll give those both Bs. Well, certainly very easy to tell that there was a cold front that uh, that passed through the region and uh, quite easy to see where that cold front is still at right now. Out in front of it, temps are warm. Behind it, it is cool. And as you could see here in our area, we're well beyond that frontal system now with 30s and 40s, uh, even some low 50s out there. Most of our area, though, 40s to near 50. It has been a cooler day today. And it's also been very windy with winds gusting at times uh, in the 30 to 40 mile an hour range. So temperatures in the 40s, dropping wind chills in the 30s. It is chilly out there this evening. Let's take a look at future casts tonight. Some, any rain or snow showers off in the north central port portion of the state will dissipate this evening. We'll clear out here across the area and we'll be left with mainly clear skies to start tomorrow. Now late in the day tomorrow we bring in a few rain and snow showers. As you can see, they're starting to slide into the area tomorrow across the region from the west. We'll have a better chance coming Wednesday night, though, into Thursday. 
here in our area as we look at what's coming here over the next uh, 36 hours or so. Forecasting lows tonight, 20s and 30s. It's a chilly one. Tomorrow's highs, 50s to near 60. And we don't have a lot coming in the terms of precip. A few hundreds out there from some of those showers uh, and nothing really in the way of snowfall coming here over the next couple of days as well. And again, we should, could see some more of that as we go later on into the forecast into Wednesday. Clear sky tonight and a low down around 34. Light winds tomorrow, sunny and some clouds. Going to see breezy conditions. 15 to 25 mile an hour winds, higher gusts possible at times. Some showers again late Wednesday into Thursday. Temperatures slide back into the 50s, I think, on Thursday. We'll rebound into the 60s. Right now, okay conditions as we go into Monday of next week for Halloween and temperatures back up into the mid-60s. Are you looking for the perfect place to hold a wedding, family reunion, holiday office party, or business meeting? Well, look no further. The Hampton Inn and Suites Hotel and Conference Center is just the place for you. We're a full-service banquet facility that can host up to 400 of your guests. Stop in and see our spacious open concept meeting rooms and begin planning your special event or family gathering today. Let us do the work for you so you can enjoy your guests. For personal service, stop by the Hampton Inn and Suites front desk. Culture trumps everything else. In my years, I've never worked for a company that treats people the way this one does. It is my passion for agriculture that brought me here in the first place, but not only that, there's a huge uh, family-oriented atmosphere within the 21st century equipment. I love working for 21st. They found something in me that I didn't know in myself. An intern to where I'm at now is such a great opportunity, and that is what this company is about. Now, sports from the FNBO Sports Desk. FNBO, the great big small bank. We feature the November for Noah event today on KNEB.TV. Ran this story on the website back at the end of August, and now we're getting closer to the youth basketball event named for Noah Bruner, but also meant to try and recognize Matt Bruner and Sidney Brester. Those three losing their lives coming up on about one year ago in that plane crash near Shadron. Noah's mom, Deidre, spoke late last week about the event and how it came to be with the help of Power to Play in Colorado. Shortly after the accident, uh, Michael Peterson from Power to Play had been in conversation with us about how things were going and he just wanted to have an opportunity to give back and it was really his idea to sponsor this tournament and it's kind of started off that it would be something that they would sponsor down there in Windsor, Colorado and would give proceeds back to the Scottsbluff School in the name of Noah. Noah had worked at Power to Play for a short time but had made a major impact there in Windsor setting up youth basketball tournaments and being an emerging part of the team at Power to Play. This event now has six different youth tournaments across Nebraska, Colorado and Wyoming with the Scotts Bluff event tipping everything off this upcoming Sunday. It's just an honor for us as a family that um, power to play would want to do this in the name of Noah and um, our loved ones that we've lost. Um, and it's a, just a great opportunity for us also to give back to the community and those that have been so great and gracious to us over the last several months. So it's, it's an honor and a pleasure to be able to do it. Um, we are so grateful to power to play and to Michael Peterson for wanting to do this and um, now it's turned into a series of tournaments that um, we are incredibly blessed to be a part of and um, be able to give back in this kind of a way. As of now, the youth tournament for Scotts Bluff has over 20 teams entered in different age brackets with games scheduled to start this upcoming Sunday morning at 830. 
Now as a sidebar to this event, some of the organizers are hoping to find a new crop of young officials that could start to break into officiating full-time. Scott's Bluff Activities Director Dave Hawksworth would love to see some interest on that front. So we've noticed, you know, especially in the Valley with lower level the last few years, we have uh, a lot of our officials are kind of stepping away, getting older. It's time, you know, they're just tired of running up and down the floor and it's time for us to get some new blood out there. And we thought this would be a great way to tie in a couple of the things that Noah loved to do. And one of those was officiate. And so we're going to try to organize a uh, officiating clinic with this where we're going to have some veteran officials uh, work with younger people that want to get started. Girls, guys, um, we're, look, we're looking at high school age kids, college age kids. Um, I've had a few people in the community reach out to me about if they could officiate. This would be a great opportunity to do that and work alongside a veteran official to get started. Hawksworth says the work with the younger group of officials can continue past just this one day event. The next week we're going to sit down with our lower level schedules and try to plug some of these new officials in to some of our middle school events in Scotts Bluff and Gehring. Um, and we're not the only ones that need lower level officials. Baird, Mitchell, Morrill, if they're willing to drive 20 miles they can get games there as well. The November for NOAA event will serve as a great opportunity for young basketball players to get on the court, for some young officials to try their hand with the stripes on, and most importantly, a great way to keep the spirit of NOAA and Matt Bruner and Sidney Brester alive and well in our community. That's the latest today. From the FNBO Sports Desk, I'm Chris Cottrell. Well, let's take a look what's happening on today's community calendar. The community calendar is brought to you by Riverstone Bank. First State Bank is now Riverstone Bank. Community strong with the same people you know and trust. 
Fly United Airlines operated by SkyWest with Western Nebraska Regional Airport. United is dedicated to going the extra mile for you with daily flights to and from Denver along with a commitment to excellent service. Reserve your flight today and remember United miles can be earned and redeemed with your flights. While at the airport, stop and enjoy authentic Italian food at Roma Italian Restaurant. Plus, Hertz Thrifty Car Rental is there for your car rental needs. Make life easier, relax, and get on board with Western Nebraska Regional Airport. Looking for free instead of fees? Platte Valley Bank can help you keep your finances moving forward with no ATM fees. Whether you're headed to the lake, the mountains, or just to the grocery store, you can enjoy the freedom of free ATM access anywhere, anytime. Platte Valley Bank. You belong here. And finally tonight, there's a new addition to Scotch Bluff's Monument Pathway, thanks in part to a donation from the Scotch Bluff Gearing Rotary Club. On Friday afternoon, volunteers on Friday afternoon, volunteers were out just east of the pedestrian bridge, planting eight trees along the pathway. Former Rotary President John Marshall says that two years ago, the club committed $5,000 for this project and the stars aligned late last week for planting. Specific date, uh, it's good to plant trees this time of year where the weather is favorable, it's a little cooler, uh, less stress on the trees, and the opportunity with the city presented itself that we could do it today, and the timing worked out great. In addition to the trees, the Rotary Club also purchased two benches that will be installed along the pathway as well. Well, that is it for us this time. Thank you so much for tuning in. Stay safe out there. We'll see you here next time.